The Concorde was so loud, the people sued the government for letting it fly over them. Until the deafening thunderclaps that come with supersonic flight are silenced, supersonic flight will continue to be the stuff of dreams for most people. This is where the X-59 comes in. It's here to silence the thunder. If the jet becomes all it promises to be, it could change air travel forever. To know how much change it can bring in the future, we must first look into the past, where its supersonic predecessor resides. Enter the Concorde The Concorde was a revolutionary three-crewed aircraft that took the world by storm by doing the seemingly impossible, transporting dozens of people over long distances at supersonic speeds. The Concorde was jointly developed and manufactured by France and Britain at an estimated cost of over $13 billion in today's money. Construction of an initial six prototypes began in February 1965, and in four years, by March 1969, the Concorde had taken to the sky. Its full glory was easy to see as it flew, a massive aluminum bird designed with a narrow fuselage that could hold up to 128 passengers a droop nose for landing visibility, and an Ogival Delta wing to handle the supersonic speeds it was sure to experience. Powered by four Rolls-Royce Snecma Olympus 593 turbojets that each produce up to 38,050 pound force of thrust, the aircraft could supercruise at speeds two times faster than the speed of sound and reach a space-bordering altitude of 60,000 feet, capabilities only previously reserved for relatively compact military fighter jets. And this wasn't the only similarity the Concorde shared with military jets. The aircraft was also the first civilian-carrying aircraft to feature analog fly-by-wire flight controls. Concorde entered service on January 21, 1976, with both Air France and British Airways. It was going to be the beginning of a historical career. For the customers, Concorde got them to their destinations faster than a private jet could have. For the operators, Concorde was fetching in massive numbers in profit. Everyone was happy, or so it seemed. The Concorde's supersonic speed came at quite the cost. It gulped up huge amounts of fuel, had high emissions, was overall expensive to maintain for its operators, and more expensive to fly than subsonic aircraft for its customers. But perhaps most fatally, it was mighty loud at takeoff and during flight. This was a result of the sonic booms inherent to supersonic flight. Sonic booms generate enormous amounts of sound energy, about 110 decibels. That's like an explosion or a thunderclap. The force of the boom rattled windows and loosened roof tiles. The sonic booms were so disruptive that the Concorde was banned from flying over land in most countries. Only the US, UK, and France embraced this, and even they restricted the flights to cities in close proximity to the ocean, such as New York, Paris, London, and so on. This was a world apart from the Concorde's early days. When the Concorde was originally designed in the early 1960s, governments and airlines around the world lined up to place orders. The plane did an around-the-world publicity trip and was well-received. All of that disappeared quickly and was replaced with very negative sentiments thanks to the sonic booms. In 1964, the Federal Aviation Administration and NASA conducted a six-month sonic boom research project in Oklahoma City. Without warning residents beforehand, the experiment consisted of eight sonic booms every day for six months. 15,000 complaints in a class action lawsuit were filed. The government lost on appeals. There was even an actual anti-Concord project meant to challenge what the Concord stood for. All of these forced research into silencing sonic booms. Without such research, supersonic passenger transport would likely never happen. After decades of research, a new supersonic passenger jet has been unveiled, one that promises to not only win speed records, but also win the hearts of the people. This jet is the X-59 Quest. The X-59 Quest is an experimental supersonic aircraft under development by Lockheed Martin's world-renowned Skunk Works division for NASA. The aircraft is designed to stop shock waves from forming and ultimately reduce the loud supersonic thunderclaps to something like a thunder rumble, a door closing, or just quiet thumps. Preliminary design started in February 2016. As of 2017, the aircraft's ground noise was expected to go as low as 60 decibels, about 1 1,000th as loud as current supersonic jets. Subsequent predictions up that number a bit. Still, the aircraft would be quite quiet. This was to be achieved by using a long, narrow airframe and canards to keep the shock waves from forming. The cockpit's almost halfway the length of the 99.7-foot-long aircraft, 
making it a really long beaked bird. The beak, which is almost a third of the aircraft's length, would heavily impair forward visibility and so the aircraft doesn't bother with a forward-facing window. Instead, it'll feature NASA's external vision system, which is simply a series of high-resolution cameras feeding a 4K monitor in the cockpit. Every interaction with the outside world will be made via these cameras and some other systems. Collins Aerospace was contracted to supply its ProLine Fusion cockpit avionics to display the boom on the ground and its EVS-3600 multispectral imaging system to be installed beneath the aircraft nose for landing. Another shockwave prevention feature on the X-59 is its engine mounted on top to give the aircraft a smooth underside. The engine on top is the General Electric F-414. This engine will reportedly thrust the X-59 to a supersonic top speed of Mach 1.5 and a flight ceiling of 55,000 feet. This is the same engine on top tier military fighter jets such as the Saab JAS-39 Gripen and the U.S. Navy's F-A-18 Hornet. The F-59's cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy come from a Northrop T-38 and the landing gear from an F-16. The X-59 is an aircraft with military-level technologies but conventional flight focus. On January 12th this year, the hybrid was unveiled at the legendary Lockheed Martin Skunk Works facility in Palmdale, California. So many reputable aircraft have been unveiled here, and the X-59 is looking to be another one. Using the aircraft, NASA will gather data that can be used to lift the half-a-century ban on supersonic passenger aircraft around the world. This is the main goal of NASA's Quest project. Quest, which stands for Quiet Supersonic Technology, focuses on providing data to help regulators reconsider rules that prohibit commercial supersonic flight over land. With regulators satisfied with the new approach to supersonic passenger flight, airliners would be able to operate such aircraft once again, cost-efficiently, and aircraft makers would have an entirely new industry to fill up with aircraft. People will arrive at their destinations in a fraction of the time it takes today, and everyone will be happy again. This is what the X-59 can do. In a way, it's what every X-Plane does. They push the boundaries of today's technologies to birth the technologies of tomorrow. X-Planes are experimental U.S. aircraft, airplanes, helicopters, and even rockets used to test and evaluate new technologies and aerodynamic concepts. The first X-Plane was the Bell X-1, developed in 1946 by a team of the U.S. Air Force and NACA, now NASA, the X-1 was the first aircraft ever to break the sound barrier in level flight. It also proved the aerodynamic viability of thin wing sections. Its success contributed greatly to thousands of supersonic aircraft today. There have been dozens of X-planes after the X-1, and they've proved dozens of technologies. Forward swept wings, thrust vectoring super maneuverability, blended wing body, stealth, and so on. The X-59, being a purely experimental plane, isn't meant to ever enter service. It will, however, prove the technologies that future aircraft can employ en route to entering service. With the aircraft unveiled, the next line of action is first flight preparation, which includes integrated system tests, taxi tests, and engine runs. The aircraft is set to take off for the first time later this year, followed by its first quiet supersonic flight. The Quest team will conduct several of the aircraft's flight tests at Skunk Works before transferring it to NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, which will serve as its base of operations. Once NASA completes flight tests, the agency will fly the aircraft over several to-be-selected cities across the U.S., collecting input about the sound the X-59 generates and how people perceive it. NASA will provide that data to the Federal Aviation Administration and international regulators, and then the world waits. Challenging the norm is always a battle. For the X-59 Quest, this is a battle it intends to win. With a new design unlike anything ever seen, this aircraft is breaking ground by breaking the speed barrier without making sonic booms that break people's hearts. For that reason, support this aircraft by giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching.